What's up, deep buds? What's up, deep though? So happy Wednesday. It's Real Talk, you guys. Back with a Real Talk video for you guys. I hope you guys have a great week. For me, it's been easy going. So today is Tuesday, which is my daughter Nay's birthday. Y'all know Nay. She be doing the videos with me like the Rose Gal try on. So today's her birthday, and she is 17. So by the time y'all get this, it'll be the next day, the day after. But she's 17 years old, the end of the month. You know what I'm saying? And she has her dance performance this Thursday and Friday at school because she loves dance. And then next weekend, she has prom. So we had to get those prom shoes. We already got that prom dress, $200 dress. I did not know that prom dresses cost that much. I think I told y'all that already. But, you know, because, you know, when I went to prom, they wasn't that much. So, you know. Yeah. So anyway, other than that, I have been just chilling. This has really been like an easy week for me. I mean, like, well, somewhat. I didn't put any wigs out for sale this past weekend. So I will definitely have some up this weekend. Today, when I'm done with this, because I got my makeup on and stuff, I'm going to be doing this video, which is the sensational What Lace. This one is um, Morgan. So this will be up on Thursday. So make sure y'all bitches watch this on Thursday. Sam's Beauty. Hello. Yeah, so make sure y'all watch that on Thursday. I will be posting that up. And other than that, I mean, I really don't have much to discuss. Um, I lost like five pounds, okay? It's probably because I wasn't eating. I'd be just so busy. Um, I'm trying to think what I got to share with you guys. Um, I don't really think I got much to share. So with that being said, we're just going to get into this real talk. I'm just like really sitting here thinking like, what the fuck do I have to tell you guys? Because my brain be like, I be forgetting shit sometimes. And I know that there was something that I needed to tell you guys. I don't remember, but you know what? Whatever. Let's just get into this real talk. You already know the deal. If you have a real talk that you want me to dish out and talk about, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line real talk so that way when I type it in my email, it will pop up. Also, if you want to change the names of the people that you are talking about as well as, well as your own, you can always tell me that I've changed the names. But if you don't, they're 99.9% .9 baby daddies. Your girl will change it for you. So send me an email. Make sure it says Real Talk. Change the names. And the bitch will tell your business. We can't spill the tea. Okay? So on that note, let's get into this Real Talk. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Real Trap. All right, you guys. Hi, Miss April. You can call me Giselle. I hope all is well. Just have to tell you that I've been loving your videos lately. You just have a different kind of glow nowadays. So I have another situation I would love your input on. So, yeah, I've been told that I've got this glow now since my husband's been home. Girl, bitch, it's the fucking highlighters, okay? It's the highlight. I'm, like, doing my makeup a little bit better, you know? I've got a little bit of skills, you know? You learn shit over the years. Maybe I am glowing. I don't know. I know this much, bitches. I know this much. I'm very, very happy, and it's been a long time coming. I've waited for this moment for the longest. You guys know from back in the days that I love this man. Like, I absolutely adore him. I love him so much. So I have been waiting for this moment for so long. And I'm really happy and I'm very glad that we are back together. Um, we've been back together for a while. I just don't tell y'all all my business. But when I did tell you guys, we had already been back together for quite some time. But, you know... Even though I've been here in Arizona, this coming July will be six years. I have been without him for like three and a half. So, you know, that, that's a long time to be without somebody, especially if you like really, really love them. You love them. And like, so I love him. And oh my God, he loves the hell out of me. So, you know, we all grow up and we change our lives. We grow up. I've grown up a lot. He's grown up a lot. He's changed his ways and his bad habits drinking and I've changed. I've become more tired 
I'll I'll tolerate person a little bit more. I have a little bit more patience. Okay. I ain't got no bad habits. If you want to call weed smoking that, then I'm sorry, bitch. I'm about to keep smoking. But anyway, so yes, I guess I am glowing somewhat. And I thank you all for noticing that. So if I gain weight, because everyone keeps saying it's the love, like my girl, Jennifer, you know, Jennifer, you, you keep telling me it's love. It's a love weight. Yeah, I love love too, but honey, I'm not trying to be working, take trying to lose it all over again, okay? I worked so hard to lose this weight. I don't want to keep working so hard to take it and keep it off, but I do appreciate you guys for real though. I want to say thank you. So thank you for noticing and I love you guys too. So you guys make me glow too. I'll be reading the comments. I'll be all smiling and cheesing like Chessa Cat, you know, like a Chessa Cat. So yeah. So let's get back into this. So so I have another situation I would love your input on. A few weeks ago, I met a guy while I was walking to, to my car from church. My church is right smack dab in the hood and has been there for over 110 years. Right across the street from my church is a trap house. The guy I met, tra I met traps out of his house. <laughs> okay, wait. The guy I met traps out of his house along with some other guys sells drugs. So I'm walking to my car and he stops me and very politely says, can I take you out to eat? Something told me to give this guy a chance because I don't like to judge people on what I think I know about them. So I let him take me out. Turns out he's on parole after doing seven years in jail on some drug and gang charges. And he's 29 now. Normally, these would be huge red flags for me because I usually go for the master's degree type of guys, but they have been fails. He listened to me and was a real gentleman. Fast forward to now, and we have spent every day together once I'm off of work. I have a really good time when I'm with him, and he respects the fact that I want to take it slow. But there is just a little doubt in my mind because he does have a past and still continues to sell drugs. I'm just scared of falling for this guy and losing him to the streets or to jail. You know, that kind of pain Lauren London is going through. I couldn't imagine what do you, I couldn't imagine how she would feel. What do you think I should do? Leave him alone or continue taking it slow and see where it goes. I know what you and the other divas are probably thinking. Sis, you can't change him. I know, I know. But this guy seems very genuine. But this guy seems very genuine so far. And honestly, who am I to judge? So, okay. So basically Giselle, you know, Giselle with her Christian self was coming home from church. And like I told you guys, her church is dead smack in the hood. It has been there for 110 years. So basically she come in, you know, she come out of church. She walk into her car and right across from the church is a trap house, you know? So outside the trap house is the trap nigga. Okay, if you don't stop, I can call on my phone. So basically, like I was saying, Giselle went to church, came out of church, walked to her car. Right across the street from the church is a trap house. Outside the trap house is the trap niggas. You know what I'm saying? They selling. He's he, The dude she met, we're going to call him Mike. Mike, you know, he's standing outside the trap house. He sells drugs outside of, inside the trap house. The trap house is actually where he lives as well. So, you know what I'm saying? For one, that's a red flag. But, you know what I'm saying? You always want to give a person a chance because even though he might be standing there, there might be a reason for that. He might not be the trap nigga, but she knows he's a trap nigga, okay? Now, mind you, she has been trying to date other men or she has had dates and relationships in the past with men who's had degrees, you know what I'm saying? And those relationships have failed for her. But this dude that she's went out with, Mike, Trap Lord, we're going to call him Trap Lord, okay? We're going to call him the Trap Lord for short, Mike. Um, This guy, Mike, Trap Lord Mike, who she's been going out with, he's been a real gentleman. He took her out to eat. The first day he saw her coming out of church, going to her car, he asked her, could he take her out? They exchanged numbers. She allowed him to take her out. You know, he seemed to be a real gentleman. He, you know, revealed his past. He's on parole. He spent seven years in jail for trapping, you know, selling drugs, being in the game, doing all that dumb shit that he had no business doing. So he, he paid his dues. He, and he's still paying his dues because he's on parole. Um, and she's falling for him because he treats her like a gentleman. But here's the thing. She wants to know, should she leave him alone? Because she don't want to fall victim to this potential relationship. And then this nigga, Trap Lord Mike, ends up going to jail or losing his life. You know what I'm saying? And so she's kind of like relating the situation with Lauren London, 
who lost, you know, Nipsey Hussle recently. And, you know, I can't imagine how she would feel or anybody would feel if they was to lose someone and um to violence, to any type of violence. I could not imagine, you know, so I can't just use Laura London. I could just use in general. But I do know this. Trap Lord Mike is on parole. He already done did seven years for selling drugs and gang bullshit. Why the fuck would you come back out of jail after giving him seven years of your life, plus you on parole, you on paper, to sell drugs? Like, who the fuck is that stupid to do shit like that? I mean, like, yeah, I get it. There are a lot of stupid motherfuckers out there that will do a crime and then come back out and do some more dumb shit. I get that. I know this. But I'm sorry if it was a bitch like me and I just gave y'all seven years of my life and y'all put me on parole, bitch, I'm going to be squeaky ass clean. You ain't even going to see me no more. I'm going to just go to work and come home. That's it. I'm not going to have no friends. I probably won't even have a phone. I'm not trying to get in no type of bullshit. Even if I wasn't on parole and I just gave y'all bitches seven years of my life, I'm still going to walk the straight and narrow path. I'm not about to come back out here and do dumb shit to end up back in jail. But this be the problem with a lot of these niggas that sell drugs and feel like they, they, you you know what I'm saying? They trap laws. They feel like, okay, I got caught, but I ain't going to get caught once again. I ain't going back to jail because I ain't going to get caught again. Because you feel or they feel like they did something different or they going to do something different for this go around. But what you done did different this time, somebody already else done did that and they already else done been in, um, arrested. They already been in jail. So what trap law might think, I'm pretty sure he feel like he not going to jail this time because he feel like he doing something different. Sweetheart, Giselle. The nigga going to end up either back in jail or in some serious trouble. And I would hate to say dead, but I'm just going to say he going to end up in some shit that you're not ready to handle. Okay. And not only that, but this, even if he don't end up in some shit, the nigga is not really thinking about his future or his well-being because he's in a trap house that he lives in. Who the fuck sells drugs out of the house they live in? You make it a trap house. It's not just you selling weed. Okay, you got yourself and your boys coming in selling drugs. So now it's like this big fucking elaborate scenery because this is what I'm picturing. So here it is. I live in this house and I'm trapping and I got some bitches coming over and we all trapping. Don't you think that will look suspect after a while? You got people coming over and leaving, you know what I'm saying? Like crackheads or whatever coming over and leaving or whatever the fucking type of drug addicts you got. You got them coming to your house and leaving because drug addicts don't never look great. Like I, you know, I have, I do know some crackheads and shit and some of them do look pretty decent, but some other drug addicts, Addicts, like whatever drug you on, I just call them all crackheads. Okay. I don't care what kind of drug you on. You just a crackhead, but you know what I'm saying? Like I've seen other drug addicts that really don't look that great. Okay. So nine times out of 10, I would say like out of 10 crackheads that come to your house, I would say at least like eight of them are going to look like crackheads. And maybe the two are going to be like the suit and tie crackheads. Cause you know, you got crackheads that wear suit and ties too. You know, those be the, you know, and you know, incognito crackheads. Those are the working functional crackheads, not the crackheads that be out on the street all day looking for crack. They got a job to do so they can body crack. So you might have two out of those 10 that look pretty damn decent. And then, so here it is. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you've written out this place that you live in, or you just live in it regardless of what, and you selling drugs out of it. Not just you yourself are just selling drugs, but you got niggas coming up in there selling with you and you fucking live there. How fucking stupid can you possibly be? I mean, like you just setting yourself up for failure. You screaming, come pick me up, parole, police, the feds, whoever. I want to go back to jail. I want to go home. Okay. So, sweetheart, to me, Trap Lord Mike really don't seem like he cares too much about his future or the fact that his black ass just got the fuck out of jail, just got out of Dodge. And here it is. You ready to fucking jump into the war again? This is what I be talking about when I say stupid motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Like stupid motherfuckers who do dumb shit. When you have a record, a fucking criminal record, you are suspect always, okay? Always. You can be number one suspect, all right? And now 
Here it is. Giselle's having a great, good, jolly old time with Trap Lord Mike. He treating her like a gentleman. He understands that she want to take it slow. Bitch, that's called his representative, hunty. All right. I'm not saying he a dog. I don't really know Trap Lord Mike like that. You know what I'm saying? He could be like a real gentleman. But I mean, let's just be realistic and honest. What motherfucking real gentleman sells poison to the community? I don't know. In, or in gangs. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you know, let's just be realistic. Since he's such a motherfucking gentleman, you know, because I don't know, gentlemen don't sell poison to the community to gain financial money, financial gains. You know what I'm saying? So what gentleman you know sells poison to kill off the community so that they could get paid? No. I don't think Trap Lord Mike is a gentleman at all. Maybe to you, because that's how he comes across, Giselle. But, sweetheart, that's called his representative. Do you really think he's about to get out here to you, church going Giselle, church lady Giselle, we, church lady Giselle, church lady Giselle, church lady Giselle? Do you really think Trap Lord Mike is about to get out here to church lady Giselle, okay, and show his true motherfucking colors? Okay. First of all, you lucky that the nigga told you he did seven years years for trapping and gang banging and now he's still trapping and he's on parole you lucky you got that much info out of him but sometimes too much info can be too motherfucking much i wouldn't even want to know all of that now you know all his business you don't know what the nigga's capable of doing to you you didn't know now, he, now you know he sell drugs out of his house let me tell you something sweetheart that's fine and dandy. He's real nice. He take you out. He spend time with you. He is consoling to you. He's loving. He's nurturing. He's telling you that he wants to take things slow because that's what you want to do. He's understanding. He's respectful. Yeah. And he probably also wants the P-U-S-S-Y. Okay. The pussy. I mean, I'm saying like if I wanted the pussy, I would be nice too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to tell you we could take it slow. I'm going to still try to get the pussy. Okay. If I was a dude and, and also you done came out of church, he probably feel like he got himself a good Christian girl who ain't into no drama and trouble. Not like them trap bitches he's used to. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? Why would he want a street girl and he a street nigga? Them shits don't mingle sometimes. That's sometimes that's just too much chaos at one time. So of course, when you see like these thug down niggas, you see... Some of most of them have like good good girls. Like, hello, I'm right here. I know what I'm talking about because I've already been through this. So you got Trap Lord Mike and you've got Church Lady Giselle. And he sees Church Lady Giselle and he sees her as a good girl, a good young lady, a good woman. She's going to church. She has some moral values. She has some values in general. You know what I'm saying? She's doing well for herself. And then you got twerking Tina down the street, who is just twerking thought Tina. She probably don't really want much. She loved the trap niggas. And she about that drama life. Why the fuck would he want to mess with her when that's just bringing too much attention to what the fuck he's got going on? But church, um, church lady Giselle, she's church lady Giselle. She's a good girl. Not too much drama and heat. But also, he may think that you're vulnerable and he also may feel like you're stupid. And he also may feel like he could feed you whatever line he want to feed you because why? He probably wants some of that church pussy. Girl, he trying to get up all in the house of the Lord. What do I think you should do, sweetheart? Honey, I'm about to tell you right now. Bitch, I think you better put on your motherfucking church dress, church shoes, and put on your motherfucking church bonnet and walk down to the pupil and motherfucking pray, okay? Give your tithes, pay your tithes, and pray. Do a little bit of holy 
a Kumantanas or whatever the fuck you want to call that shit and get the fuck away from Trap Lord Mike because he's no good for you. And I could totally understand that some of the relationships that you try to, you know what I'm saying, inquire and try to, you know, establish didn't work out with these, these men's with bachelor degrees and all type of degrees. Okay. That's okay. They didn't work out, but that doesn't mean that you have to lower your standards for a trap nigga because he's so respectful. Later on down the line, this nigga's about his 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 paper, okay? He about getting that money. That's what the fuck he's about. And yeah, in the beginning, he woos you. He he throws down the roses so you can walk across the floor. You know what I'm saying? He's very attentive. But later on down the line, when he's comfortable with you and you comfortable with him, this is when the change starts. This is when he's too busy for you because he's in the trap house. This is when he invites you over to come spend a night at the trap house. This is when he tell you, come on over and chill with me at the trap house. Bitch, if you go to the motherfucking trap house, you are setting yourself up for failure. You are setting yourself up for going down with the handcuffs on because you never know what the fuck could be going down. You don't even know if anybody that is a part of the law is watching this motherfucker. You don't know this. This is the problem with these men. They feel like they are non-expendable. They feel like they, you know what I'm saying? They are non-stoppable. They are non-touchable. They feel like they can get away with trapping all the time. And I'm sorry to say this. If you got a boyfriend that's trapping, try to find him a fucking nine to five job. Because that shit is, first of all, selling drugs is whack. And that shit is mad corny and old. That shit has been played the fuck out. All right. Especially for grown ass motherfuckers. So you just telling me, Giselle, that Trap Lord Mike is 29 years old. Don't you, I don't know about y'all bitches, but don't you think like 30 years old, 29, that's 30. Let's round that shit off. 30 years old is a little bit too old to be selling drugs out of a trap house. I mean, come on, man. You're a grown-ass, whole grown-ass man. And you 30 years old selling drugs. But when you get off of work, Giselle, that's when you spend time with him. I'm sorry, but I don't know about y'all bitches. But let me tell y'all what. If I'm working a 9 to 5 and my boyfriend is trapping, I'm sorry, but I can't fucks with you. If you ain't got no job and I work, I'm sorry. I can't fucks with you, okay? I'm not saying I'm a gold digger, but listen, I'm not about to be with no bum ass nigga. All right. And even if you get money by selling drugs, you still a bum ass nigga to me for real, because that shit ain't no life term shit. That shit don't bring you no retirement, no pensions. You know what I'm saying? No IRAs, no 401s. It don't do none of that shit. All that shit do is fucking drain your pockets. Selling drugs drains your pockets because nine times out of 10, bitch, you will have to bail a nigga out. And that's money that you just save the fuck up or then earn. And then you got to give it away because this nigga who's trapping got arrested. Like, let's be realistic. 30 years old, you should not be fucking selling drugs out of a trap house that you fucking live in. Who the fuck is that stupid? Like, I mean, like, just thinking about that shit pisses me the fuck off. Because here it is, I'm about to be 45 in June. And, like, that shit is just corny. Like, you know what I'm saying? 30 years old? Like, let's come on now. Giselle, he's 29, and he's still selling drugs out of his own motherfucking house. How stupid can you be? Listen, let me tell you this. The right man, the one that, you know is supposed to be with you will come along. May not be today, may not be tomorrow, may not be next week, next month, next year. But I guarantee you, when you don't be looking, you will find the one. It will happen naturally like it's supposed to. Not when your black ass is coming out of church in the ghetto or in the hood, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and you got a trap house across the street and a trap niggas asking you out for dinner. Nigga, I ain't hungry. But what about tomorrow? I ain't going to be hungry then. I'm on a diet, a lifetime motherfucking diet. Bye, bitch. Now, I don't know about y'all, you know what I'm saying? But me, my personal opinion on this shit is leave that trap nigga Mike alone, okay? And girl, go back to the house of the Lord because that's where you need to be right now. Pray on that shit. This situation that you put yourself in is not really a good situation. However, you can still get out of it. You still can just go ahead and escape out of it. But don't get involved and just start falling for the shit that he's telling you. This this lifestyle that he lives is not your lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Just like you said, you going for the men that have degrees. Well, yeah, those men that have degrees, they might have not worked out for you because they may want a little bit more than you're willing to give. But the number one thing comes first. When you care for yourself and you love yourself and you respect yourself, then certain type of motherfuckers will not be allowed into your life. And that motherfucker across the street, he is a devil right across the street from the house of the 
Lord. Now I told y'all, I don't, I'm not a religious person. I'm not like a religious person. I have my own beliefs and what my belief is, is what my belief is. And what y'all believe in, that's, that's good. I'm not about to sit here and preach to y'all and bring out the Bible and read y'all some quotes from it. Cause that's not me. Okay. But what I am going to tell you is this much. He's selling poison and that's a devilish move. And here it is. The devil is right across the street from the house of the Lord. And that right there is very suspect. You know what I'm saying? That right there shows you that the devil be working at all times. He don't give two fucks if he is across the street from the house of the Lord. The devil is there. He's always there. He will walk his little narrow ass into the house of the Lord if he wants to. We got people like that at church who ain't nothing but devils on the inside and sometimes on the outside. You can see right through that shit. They just be sitting there in church, listen to the war, to the word with them horns on their head. That's the reason why I stopped going because of all the motherfucking hypocrites because that's what the fuck they are. Them devils is hypocrites. Now, here we got one that's just right dead smack across the street from the church and he's blatant with the shit. I live in my trap house. You know what I'm saying? I live there. Me and my niggas, we sell the drugs out the trap house across the street from the Lord. And I like to be across the street from the Lord because, you know what I'm saying, if I feel like some type of way, I got the Lord to protect me right across the street. That's why I know I'm not going to go back to jail because, you know, I know I'm on parole and shit like that. Parole probably going to come through to the trap house and make their little home business. But I know living across the street from the house of the Lord, the church, that I'm always in good standing. I just get on my knees every night and I pray to God that I don't get caught trapping. So on that note, Giselle, church ladies, Giselle, you make the decision, but I'm here to tell you, bitch, you don't need to be bothered with this situation at all. Not a good situation. What y'all girls think? Like, seriously, I want to know. So on that, we about to go to the next video. Okay. Okay, so this one is a little longer, all right? Hey, girl, first off, I want to say how much I love your channel, and I always look forward to your videos, especially your Rose Gal hauls. <sighs> I like the Rose Gal hauls, too. I have to, I have, um, I have to make an order to do another video for them, so hopefully I got one coming up soon. I got a real talk question, and I'm just looking for somebody with sense. For example, you. To confirm whether or not I'm growing, I'm going crazy. Well, bitch, I'll be going crazy. So I don't know if I could tell you if you're going crazy, but I'm pretty sure the divas and the devos here can tell you if your ass is going crazy. Here I go. Earlier this year, I moved back to my home city from working in another part of the country. I've been living with my younger brother and his wife and a four-year-old while I'm a single woman, the oldest child in our family. Wait, what? I've been living with my younger brother and his wife and... Uh, and their four-year-old while I'm a single woman and I'm the oldest child in our family. I thought that I could help them out at home while I look for my own place and contribute financially to their household. But the problem has been my brother's wife. Mm. Let me call that bitch shrimp because that's all she makes time to cook for herself. Ugh. Shrimp is a stay-at-home mom, but she doesn't do anything all day but Snapchat and play with her pet rabbit. And she's in her 30s. She's, she doesn't brush her teeth, bathe, cook, clean, and her little son speaks like a baby and runs around with no pants peeing on himself all day. She orders delivery meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on my brother's dime. And she feeds her son chocolate and candy. He doesn't even like the taste of fruit or anything nutritious. When they don't have enough money for delivery, shrimp will take herself into the kitchen and make herself a plate of shrimp and eat it by herself, not even feeding her son. The boy goes to bed at 2 a.m. on the regular. Shrimp, whoa, the boy, the little four-year-old boy goes to bed at 2 a.m. on the regular. Shrimp leaves rabbit shit and pee all over the main bathroom because she takes that thing into the bathtub to let it play around and give it more grooming that she gives herself. And what? She puts the rabbit in the bathtub to let the rabbit play around and she gives the rabbit more grooming than she gives herself and her four-year-old son. My mother, my brother works two jobs to support this crazy ass lifestyle. So he's rarely home. I should also mention that my brother has another daughter from his first baby mama and his daughter is 11 years old. She spends every other week with us at her dad's house. 
When I moved in, I did everything I could to help out because I felt like that's my little brother's family. Maybe they just need some tips. At first, me and Shrimp were getting along, but I noticed sometimes she would make N-word jokes. For reference, me and my brother are black and his wife is Latina. My brother's daughter is half white. I never thought that Shrimp and I would be best friends since we're too different and I don't like some of the things she says, but I always kept it friendly with her and wanted her to feel that I accepted her as a family member in spite of our differences. Well, before long, I was cooking and cleaning all day, helping out with homework, and this bitch Shrimp would only leave her bedroom to gobble the food that I cooked. Shrimp was always bossing my niece around and shouting at her, and I didn't like that either, meaning she was bossing my brother's other child around that's not hers, the 11 year old. Here's where the problem got really bad. One day shrimp came out of nowhere and told me that my niece was going to wash an entire sink full of dishes because my niece has to learn household responsibilities. The 11 year old, that ain't her child. Shrimp was bossing the 11 year old around. That ain't her child. Now, mind you, the sink was full of dishes that had been there for three days because I had purposely stopped washing them just to see what would happen. I thought that shrimp had some nerve. I thought shrimp had some nerve talking about teaching her stepdaughter responsibilities when she doesn't talk or take responsibility her own damn self. I knew that when my niece got home from school, shrimp would start to bully her. So I got up and I washed the dishes just to prevent shrimp from having that opportunity to shout at my niece. Shrimp got so mad that she called my brother talking about I disrespect her. Then she stopped letting my nephew come near me, which is my brother and her child. Then she went on social media and unfriended and wrote all kinds of bullshit about guests disrespecting in her home and that I'm such a bitch, this and that. Then she even tried to hit me with a cupboard, a cupboard door. A... Then she tried to even hit me with a cabinet door in the face passive aggressively while I was standing by the fridge the next day. It took me all my strength not to kill her right then and there. Instead, I complained to my brother. And you know what this motherfucker said? That I need to apologize to her because she has a right to feel comfortable in her home. I haven't spoken to either one of those fools since, and I don't do any chores around the house anymore. I know they miss having the house slave, but they're too scared to approach me like adults. Shrimp's bitch ordered some pizza the other day and asked one of the kids to bring me a plate. And I sent that plate right back to her without touching the food. Once I move out of here next month, I'm going to cut my brother out of my life. And I just want to know if I'm justified in doing that. Love you, April. Thank you so much. So. She didn't give me a name, so we're just going to call her, we're going to call her Leah. So Leah is the oldest out of the siblings, and she has no children of her own. She went to stay with her little brother and his wife and their four-year-old son. Now, mind you, her brother also has 11-year-old to another person, which is a girl. Now, mind you... Leah has been staying at her brother's house for God knows how long. I'm not really sure, but she moved back to her hometown and that's the reason why she was staying there. And she has become the house slave basically. So her brother has, um, a wife and her name is shrimp. That's what the fuck she calls her. And that's what the fuck she's going to be for this video. Her name is shrimp. And that's because all that bitch do is smack on shrimp all day long. How the fuck you just eat shrimp all the fucking time? I, I don't know. I don't know why people like shrimp so much. It's like the fucking bottom of the sea, but whatever. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Here it is. Leah, she's taking responsibility. She's trying to help her brother out with his household by contributing, financially contributing, by doing household things. But it seems like Shrimp, her brother's wife, has gotten a little bit too accustomed to this. So the bitch don't do shit. The little four-year-old go to bed every night at 2 a.m. He don't walk around with any pants on. He just pees himself all day long. She barely cooks. She cooks. She orders delivery food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then when there ain't no money for delivery, she goes in the kitchen and cooks a bag of shrimp and eats the shit to herself, okay? Now, you don't clean, and then when the 11-year-old girl comes over, which is, you know, the daughter from another mother, 
Shrimp tries to bully her. She's trying to get her to wash a whole sink full of three-day-old dishes. First of all, to have dishes in the sink for three days is disgusting. I don't give a fuck who you are. That's just nasty, okay? How do you walk in and back and forth out the kitchen every day and just put more dishes in the sink and let them accumulate? That's more dishes for you to wash. And then you just see that nasty... That shit stinks, okay? That shit stinks. And it just looks disgusting and it just draws bugs. Like, who the fuck wants to live with, like, bugs, like, roaches and flies and shit like that? It's just gross. Like, that's just that's nasty. But I can understand where Leah is coming from because she's been the one who has been doing all the housework. This girl, Shrimp, all she do is sit on her ass and do nothing all day. You know what I'm saying? So, for one, for me... I think I would have been motherfucking left if there was somebody else in my hometown, like another family member or friend. I would, bitch girl, listen, Leah, I would be out of there. So now Leah is not doing any of the household chores. So I can only imagine what the fucking house looked like now. That's probably really nasty because if sink, if dishes could pile up in the sink for three days and the bitch didn't wash them that lives there, the wife, and you let dishes pile up for three days, I can only imagine what the rest of the house could look like. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you collect dishes sitting in your sink for three days, then you're a total slob. And I can only imagine what the rest of your motherfucking house looks like. Like, I'm just saying. You know? So, who is this texting me? Like, for real. Oh, my husband. Text me to drink. So, hold on. I got to text him to drink. So, yeah. I had to text him what kind of iced coffee I wanted from Dunkin' Donuts. Y'all know I like Dunkin' Donuts. Okay? Look. I need a new one. That was from yesterday. Um, so I can only imagine what the house looks like. You got three day old dishes piled up in the fucking sink. That shit stinks. And now we got Leah who's like refusing to do anything else only because let's see. Hmm. Shrimp decided the day that the 11 year old stepdaughter was to visit that she would tell the girl to wash all of the dishes in the sink. These are three day old dishes. And this was her way of teaching the 11 year old responsibility. So you mean to tell me that you've had dishes in the sink for three motherfucking days and you think that somebody that don't motherfucking live here, an 11 year old is about to come to your house to visit and wash your motherfucking dishes? Bitch, you lost your mind. I wish a motherfucker would tell my 11-year-old mumsy to wash some three-day-old dishes that you've accumulated, please. You get smacked the fuck up by me, for real. Smack, I, listen, let me tell y'all something up in here. You best to wash your own fucking dishes, okay? And dare not ask my daughter Mumsy to do a fucking thing for you because she do her own dishes, she wash her own shit, she clean up after her own stuff. Ain't no motherfucking slaves up in this bitch, okay? And they they motherfucking know it around here because I go off, I stay, I will go the fuck off, okay? Now, second of all, so... Instead of having eleven having the eleven year old girl wash the dishes, you know, Leah heard Shrimp saying, you know, Shrimp, Shrimp basically said to her that this is what she was going to do. She was once the girl came in, she was gonna have her wash the sink full of dishes. You know what I'm saying? So Shrimp Shrimp felt like this is the way to teach the eleven year old some responsibility by washing your fucking three day old dishes. So Leah felt some type of way about that. That's not her responsibility, and she's totally right. That's not your responsibility for an 11 year old to wash your dishes. You don't even take responsibility of your own shrimp. You don't bathe your child. You don't clean up the mess. So Leah decided instead of her bullying the 11 year old daughter, stepdaughter, she would wash the dishes because she didn't want her niece to be bullied. Um, I guess shrimp took that some type of way and told her husband about it and complained to her husband about it, said basically that she disrespected her by washing the dishes instead of having the 11 year old wash three day old dishes that she ain't washed. I know she didn't tell her husband all of that, but that's what the fuck it boils down to. You know what I'm saying? So on top of that, she felt like she was disrespected by her sister-in-law, Leah. So she told the husband, the husband came home. The sister, Leah, told her, her her brother about the situation. And what did the brother say? Well, you should apologize to my wife because she should be comfortable in her own home. First of all, I'm not about to apologize. Second of all, that's your 11-year-old daughter. What makes you think it's okay for your 11-year-old to come in here and wash three-day-old dishes when your wife sits at home all day on her motherfucking fat, nasty, stank ass and don't do a motherfucking thing but pet the motherfucking rabbit and stuff shrimp in her mouth? That probably sound like some real 
little perverted shit that I just said, but it's the truth. You got the little four-year-old running around pissing on himself all day long and don't even fucking bathe him. So, But you put a rabbit in the bathtub and you let the rabbit play around. There's rabbit shit all over the motherfucking floor in the bathroom and in the bathtub and all through the house. And you don't wash the dishes. You don't cook. You order shit all the motherfucking time. So, um, yeah, where's the responsibility at here? First of all, I wouldn't apologize. Second of all, did this bitch shrimp go on social media and unfriend Leah? But not just that. The bitch could have just stopped right there with the unfriend and left it at that. She goes on social media and disrespects Leah by telling people how she's a bitch, how disrespectful uninvited guests are, invited guests, whatever you want to fucking call them. Can't wait for her to leave. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Let me tell you something, Leah. First of all, I would not cut my brother out of my life because that's your blood and that's your brother. And basically, he seems like he's kind of like a little bit loopy and stupid because he's going for all of this. Okay, I don't know if the Latina pussy is that good because shrimp is Latina. But I tell you what, and they're both black. Leah is black and her brother is black and shrimp is Latina. Also, shrimp is using the N-word a lot. That's when you get popped in the motherfucking mouth because you're not going to keep walking around here, sitting around here, whatever the fuck you want to do, popping shrimp in your mouth petting a rabbit and using the motherfucking n-word while your little four-year-old is running around the house pissing on himself that's not what we're gonna have we're not about to do that okay we are not going to do that but i tell you what what i will do is this i would not i would not you know exclude my brother out of my life i wouldn't do that because that's his wife you know what I'm saying? Those are her bad habits and that's her nastiness. And if that's what he wants to involve himself in, nastiness and filth and bad habits, then allow him to do that. The one thing you don't have to do is continuously go over there. You don't have to involve yourself in his family's matters, meaning his wife and his son. Okay. You don't have to involve yourself in that, but I would not cut my brother out of my life. Yeah. He made a mistake by telling you um, to apologize to her, but you also have to realize he's probably not aware of all the shit that's going on in that house because he works two jobs. So like you said, he's very rarely there, but I'm pretty sure when he is home that there is probably some type of common decency from his wife. You know what I'm saying? which means he ends up probably being brainwashed, okay? But I would definitely not cut him out of my life because it's not him that's being disrespectful to you. It's his wife. However, I will say this, bitch. Hurry the fuck up and get out of their place, okay? Get your own place of residence and then let your brother know you will not be returning. You know, let him know how you really feel about the situation that he's in, that your nephew is living in, and that you were put in, and how it makes you feel. It doesn't have to turn into an altercation with your brother, but I would definitely invite him over to my new apartment or my new house when you do move in, and I would have a nice brother and sister sibling sit down, because you guys are blood, and you should never allow no fucking body to come in between you. I don't give a fuck if it's man, female, mother, father, you should never allow anybody to come into your equation, into your circle. Don't allow this bitch to break you apart with your brother because in reality, he's always going to be your brother. He's always going to be your blood. But also, that bitch may not always be his baby mama. That Well, she always will be his baby mama. But that bitch may not always be his wife. Eventually, shit cuts brought to the light. Eventually, he will notice sooner then hopefully later that this bitch is a slob. She don't have a job. She stays at home all day, sits on her ass, sleeps, orders breakfast, orders lunch, orders dinner, doesn't clean up, pets the motherfucking rabbit, okay? Doesn't bathe the, the four-year-old, lets him walk around the house and piss on himself all day long. Like, I've already went through, like, enough lists. Like, listen, like, this girl is tragic and toxic. So I'm hoping for... Leah's brother's sake that he finally gets a grip on life and opens his fucking eyes up and realizes that shrimp is not the woman for him. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why her brother is working two jobs right now because his wife don't do shit. So me, I wouldn't, I would never exclude my brother out of my life. That if you was to do that, that would seem like you're not the grown up person. You know what I'm saying, Leah? You have to be more mature and you have to be the bigger person. 
okay? And being a bigger sister is a, being a leader, okay? You have to teach your brother things. This is what you are there for. As a older sister, as an older sibling, you are to teach him, okay? He looks forward to you for guidance and for advice, you know, from time to time and giving him the advice of not speaking to him and cutting him out of your life is not the right thing to do. It's kind of petty because you're not having any issues with him except for that one. And that even boils down to it's just his wife. Lord knows what shrimp might've told your brother on the phone, you know what I'm saying? Because you weren't on the other end listening. So Lord knows what she might've told him to make him come to you and say, well, you need to apologize to her. It could have been a multiple of things and he's just not willing to share them with you because he doesn't want any type of altercation, any type of chaos in the home, especially when he's not there. So probably to evolve, to, to probably to, you know, exclude all of that. He probably didn't tell you everything that Shrimp said, but I guarantee you that the bitch probably said more than what you think she said, because obviously she's going on social media and she's writing about disrespectful guests and shit like that. Like, girl, grow the fuck up. You, they 30, they 30 years old. Who the fuck stays at home all day, ain't got no job, sits on their ass and pets a motherfucking rabbit all day and don't even bother to bathe. The bitch don't even brush her teeth. Like, oh my God. Or bathe. So I can only imagine your breath stink and your motherfucking pussy stink too. Bitch and your ass stink. You just stink. You a just stink bitch all around the border. You a stink ass bitch. That's why she shrimp. She probably smell like that shit. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, you the grown up in the situation. You staying with a bunch of children. They 30, but they act like a bunch of fucking kids, okay? That's my input on it. I would definitely handle the situation a lot better by just moving out. And having a few words with my brother about the situation. And maybe that'll make him put his foot down. Because there's no reason that a woman should be at home all day and doesn't have a job while her husband provides for her. And the house is disgusting like that. And they have kids and you're not even caring for the kids. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. And on top of that, you're not working, but you got your husband who's working two jobs and you steady ordering food and all type of knickknacks and patty wax and all that shit on the man's money. Like he works hard for that and you just steady spending it. You're not even getting ahead. You're just spending it and you're just accumulating more dirt in the house. That bitch probably all nasty looking stank and shit. Like, you know, I know I shouldn't say that. That's not nice and shit, but I'm just being realistic. If you don't wash, you don't brush your motherfucking teeth, then your pussy stank, your breath stank, your ass stank. Bitch, you just stank. Just, you just fucking smell. Okay. For real. But the grown up thing would not be to cut your brother out. That's not being grown up. Being grown up is just speaking to him as an adult and letting him know. And as far as that bitch shrimp, let me tell you this much. Let that bitch get out of line again and say some smart, disrespectful shit on social media. I'll let that bitch have it, okay? And when I say I'll let her have it, I will let her have it in the fucking nicest, truthest, hardest way. She would not even know that shit is coming. If she want to call you a bitch on social media, I would leave a comment and say, I guess I'm the bitch who was cleaning your home because you leave dishes piled up for three days. You don't cook, you don't clean, you don't take care of your child, you got rabbit shit. I mean, like, you can really go in on her to where she would feel like, you know what, I'm never again going to fucking talk shit about anybody else on social media, especially if I ain't got my own shit together. Listen, you got to have room to talk about somebody. Don't just go on social media, bitches, and feel like you could talk about just anybody because you hating on them when you ain't got your own shit together. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no room to talk about nobody, for real. I say I do. When I talk to my kids about some shit, I'll let them know I got room to talk about you. That's what I tell them because they be thinking I'm talking about them. And I'll be like, yeah, and I am talking about you. And I got room to talk about you because I pay every last motherfucking bill around here when your ass don't pay for shit. I got room to talk about you. But don't be a messy bitch on social media talking shit about a bitch when you know your shit in the background is looking like motherfucking alleyway. All right. You got clothes on the floor. You got food crumbs on the floor. You ain't wash your motherfucking ass in days. You don't brush your motherfucking teeth. You know what I'm saying? You don't take care of your kid. You got rabbit shit all over the motherfucking house. You don't even take care of your husband. You probably got dirty laundry piled up, dust all over the fucking place. And then on top of that, you don't even cook dinner, a decent fucking home cooked meal. 
Girl, bye. You ain't even got your shit together. You ain't got no room to talk about no motherfucking body, especially talk about your guest. Honey, let me tell you, Leah, I'll let that bitch have it for real. I'll let her have it because what you're going to say is not a lie. Everything you got to say is the motherfucking truth. I, I tell y'all this. I ain't up for all the drama and the beef and shit on social media, but I'd be damned if you think you're going to go on social media after I done took care of you, helped you, and talk bad about me. That's That right there is disrespectful. And you got shrimp telling her husband that you're disrespectful by washing the dishes when what you just did is a whole line of disrespect. Bitch, I washed your motherfucking dishes. I didn't have to do that. Where the fuck do you get off saying that's disrespect? You're not about to be bullying nobody else's kid. How about this, Leah? I'll do one better for you. I will call your niece mother, the other baby mama, and let her know what's going down. Because I'm pretty sure, me being a woman, if my kid went to their father house and they had a wife and she was bullying my kid i'm gonna be knocking on your motherfucking door like what bitch this seems like you got a problem here you gonna have to take that shit up with me you want to bully somebody here the fuck i am there's no way i'm about to have no 11 year old wash no three day old crusted ass food on the plate stuck ass dishes this is the problem with the world. Some of these bitches, I don't give a fuck if you're 30, they don't grow the fuck up. They act like everything is supposed to be given to them. Like it's okay to be a bum bitch on the couch all day and order food and not do nothing. Don't wash, don't do shit. That's just like the worst. That gives you like the worst name. And you know what I'm saying? Who the fuck does that? And then on top of that, you go on social media and you talk shit about your sister-in-law. <laughs> Let me say something. It's time for you to move out. Leave on good note, because you never know if you need to stay somewhere again. But please, bitch, if you do need to stay somewhere else, go to the motherfucking motel and stay. Don't stay with that bitch, because staying in a dirty house is one thing that I do not like. I do not like dirt and filth. I don't like bugs. I hate roaches. I'm scared to death of them. I don't try to be nowhere where I'm uncomfortable. And for you to have to live like that, I could only imagine how you feel, probably walking over shit. I could only imagine what the bathroom looks like. That's nasty. That's real motherfucking nasty. That's nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, my opinion, don't exclude your brother out of your life. However, I would give him some really good tips on life and family values for real and what it means to be clean. But I would definitely have a word with him. And if that bitch get out of line, like I said, read that bitch, okay? Read that bitch. I don't like to be petty, but I'm just saying, when somebody is combating you and they are putting you in the dirt, they try to pull you under the bus and make you look like you ain't shit, I'm about to read you, bitch. I ain't going to call you all kind of bitches and say I'm going to fuck you up or none of that shit because I don't have to do that. I'm too classy of a lady. However, I will tell you I will fuck your ass up to your face. I ain't got to do that on social media. I don't do that shit on social media. That's one thing I don't do because I don't need the police knocking on my door talking about you threatening somebody on social media media but also i don't need to be fucking saying dumb shit like that on social media like ah oh, when i see you i'm gonna fuck you up dead issue when i see you i'm gonna just fuck you up that's it you'll know you'll know when it's coming to you but you know what i'm saying like i i don't try to be petty but let me tell you if you try to drag me under the fucking bus i will read your ass on social media with no motherfucking problem i will let you have it okay i ain't got to call you bitches like i said but i will let you have it and trust me i have Okay, I have on enough fucking YouTube videos. All right, I will let you have it. It's like, you know what's so crazy? When young people, like young people could be like 20 and 30, they come and they talk shit to me on my video. And then when I say something back, oh, how you gonna be talking shit? You are old. Bitch, you ran your motherfucking monkey ass mouth to me. What makes you think that I, my old ass, ain't got shit to say back to you? Bitch, I got 45 years worth of shit to say to you that you probably don't even know about. Bitch, I'll read you so motherfucking good in the ground, they be putting a tombstone over your shit. So, on that note, 
Let Leah know what you would do in the situation as well as um, Giselle's ass, you know, church lady Giselle, let her know. I'm going to go. I got to do this video so you guys can watch it on Thursday, you know? So I love you. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, and I will see you guys on the other side.